Well, it's Tuesday and we're still doing electrics and uh, we're still, in fact, doing reverse loops. Last week we talked about the basic reverse loop concept where your track configuration is going to cause your train to turn around and go back the way it came. If you're doing that with the reversing switch, of course, that's, that's just throwing the reversing switch. But if you're running your train through a track configuration, like we showed a, a balloon track, where the train goes around a loop and then back, heading back uh, in the opposite direction from when it came, you've, you've shorted the railroad out. We have talked about the inside rail and the outside rail, the inside rail being the black rail, the outside rail being the red rail. So if we say that that base track is the red rail, it goes around the loop, comes back, and now it's the opposite rail. So the rails are shorted there at the switch. So we isolated that whole loop and put it on its own reversing switch so that we can control the polarity of that loop and then align that loop to either the bottom part of the loop, the incoming part at the bottom, or the outgoing part at the top by throwing that switch. And the easy way to do reversing loops is actually you have three complete reversing switches. The one on the transformer, which still will change the direction of the train, and two other ones, one that controls all of the railroad and one that controls the isolated section. And then by manipulating those two double pole, double throw switches, you can align the polarity for whichever end of that loop you need to, to pull the train into the loop and back out of the loop without shorting everything out. Now let's talk about another uh, track configuration, the Y configuration. The Y configuration is actually somewhat simpler uh, to do than a balloon track. The Y configuration consists of a base leg over here on the railroad, then uh, a curved section going up into a tail track. Let's call this one over here the right-hand section, or oh, let's call it the east section. That'll make that a little easier to understand. Then the another curved section going back down to the main line, let's call that the west curved track, and a Y switch and tail track at the end. So if you bring a train and you turn into the west leg of the Y, up onto the tail track, reverse the direction of the locomotive on the tail track, and then come down the east leg of the Y back to the base, you can see that the train is now heading in the opposite direction. You can pull forward. And it's a classic three-point turn that we all learned in driver's ed. So how do we isolate this electrically? It's actually really simple. Depending a little bit on your track plan, normally the easy way to do this is just isolate the tail track. Now the tail track might be a branch line that goes halfway across the room to some other place. And so you may want to instead isolate one of the two legs of the Y. And as long as your entire train will fit in the leg of the Y, that will work. But it's so much simpler if you can just isolate the tail track. And when we say isolate the tail track, we want to isolate not just the, the track that is the tail track, but the switch, the Y switch. So the, the gaps that we're going to cut are just outside of that switch in the east and west legs. Now, if we pull a locomotive, let's say, through the west leg of the Y, onto the tail track and then we throw the reversing switch that controls the tail track. That changed the polarity of the tail track and it's also now aligned the polarity with the east leg of the Y and in fact the whole main line and it has as a bonus reversed the direction of the locomotive. So without throwing any other switch just throwing that reversing switch that controls the polarity of the tail track you have aligned the, the uh, polarity with the other track of your Y, therefore you can proceed through the Y without shorting out, and you have reversed the direction of your locomotive so that you can go forward in and then back out, for example, or back in and then go forward out, whichever way you're doing. 
all done with a single reversing switch. In this case, you don't even need that second reversing switch that controls the rest of the railroad. You can do it with just simply a single reversing switch connected to the tail track of the Y. So you can see that this is actually a much simpler configuration than a, than a, a balloon track. But it's the same exact concept. Well, uh, I'd like to pitch membership here on the channel just for a second. If you're not a member, please consider that. There's a join button on the main page, and that join button will allow you to send $5 a month as a subscription in our direction. Helps us out a lot because YouTube is paying us less and less and less and less for these commercials that pop up. And uh, the members, uh, we, we do have a community area over there where we can commiserate and I post photographs of what we've been doing for the day and that sort of thing. But if you've found your way to this video uh, and you're not a subscriber and you just kind of stumbled across it, please subscribe. That doesn't cost anything. It doesn't hurt. It doesn't cause wars on distant planets. It just simply allows you to be notified when we upload a new video and it tells uh, YouTube that people are watching the channel which helps a lot. And the easy way to become a subscriber is to click the upcoming blue button. Zoink! Right there, the blue button. Well, we're not sure how you found this video on the internet. We hope you didn't find it boring and we will see you here on Sunday because Karen and I are still working on the big railroad at Garage Mahal. We'll show you that. Anyway, bye-bye.